In the words of Doug Collins, they're so busy trying to impeach the president they can't see the ridiculousness of their arguments. It's a fiery claim, and Collins doesn't hold back in his criticism of Jerry Nadler. The idea that the Founding Fathers would have found President Trump guilty, he says, is nothing short of pandering and malpractice. Collins's stance is adamantly clear. The committee, in his view, is grasping at straws. He argues that they can't find a single fact to support the impeachment, despite an avalanche of public testimony and transcripts. Collins questions the committee's motives, their methods, and their conclusions, painting a picture of a process driven more by political bias than by evidence. It's a bold critique, one that challenges the very foundation of the impeachment proceedings. In Collins's view, the proceedings are a farce, a theatrical performance with no basis in reality. As Collins puts it, we are not living in the 18th century. He challenges us to consider the relevance of the 18th century interpretation of bribery to our modern laws. Is it fitting, he asks, to apply a 200-year-old definition to a contemporary context? Collins drives his point home by bringing up the issue of corruption in foreign aid, a concern that has grown in prominence in our current globalized era. He specifically highlights the case of Ukraine, a nation that has been at the center of many international debates. But can we truly apply an 18th century understanding of bribery to such complex multifaceted issues? Collins seems to think not. He insists that we must view these matters through a 21 st century lens, taking into account the intricacies of today's international politics and legal landscape. To Collins the past is not always a guide to the present, especially when it comes to legal definitions and international politics. In the words of Zoe Lofgren, impeachment is not about punishment, impeachment is about cleansing the office. As we transition to the defense, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, a veteran of three presidential impeachment inquiries, provides a different perspective. She emphasizes the importance of the impeachment power in preserving democratic systems. To her the question at the heart of this matter is not just whether President Trump's actions were wrong, but whether they pose a threat to the Constitution and democracy itself. Lofgren argues that the Founding Fathers included impeachment in the Constitution as a safeguard against the abuse of presidential power. In their wisdom, they anticipated a time when a president might put personal interest before the nation, threatening the very fabric of democracy. This, according to Lofgren, is the crux of the issue. She asks, do President Trump's actions, soliciting a foreign nation to interfere in our elections for his personal gain, rise to the level of a high crime and misdemeanor? According to her, this is the question that the committee, and indeed, the nation, must grapple with. Lofgren's defense is not just about President Trump, it's about setting a precedent for future leaders. It's about ensuring that the highest office in the land remains a beacon of integrity, and that the principles upon which this great nation was founded are preserved. For Lofgren, this is not just about one president, it's about the future of the American democracy. As Professor Carlin remarks, if we cannot impeach a president who uses his power for personal advantage, we no longer live in a democracy. We find ourselves at a crossroads, where the actions of a sitting president are compared to those of past leaders. Professors Carlin and Gerhardt serve as navigators, guiding us through the complex labyrinth of law and ethics. Drawing a parallel between President Trump and President Nixon, the professors delve into the murky waters of political malfeasance. They point to President Trump's solicitation of a foreign country to investigate a political rival, a move they deem as more than just a faux pas. It's an affront to the democratic principles we hold dear. Where Nixon sought to manipulate domestic law enforcement, Trump, they assert, has taken it a step further, involving foreign entities in his political skirmishes. The comparison, while unflattering, is not made lightly. It is a stark reminder of the depths to which leaders may sink when unchecked power meets unchecked ambition. In this discourse, the professors underscore the gravity of the situation. This isn't a simple disagreement on policy or political ideology. It's a question of safeguarding the very foundations of our democracy from the corrosive effects of corruption and abuse of power. In the words of Professor Gerhardt, if this is not impeachable, then nothing is.